Welcome to our lecture online. The thinking always is that with telescopes, the higher the magnification, the better you're off. You want things to be made bigger as much as possible. You want the image to be as big as it can possibly be. Otherwise, things are so far away and they're so small, we won't be able to see them. But with telescopes, that's not exactly the case. It's kind of a mixed bag. The most important thing about telescopes eventually is the amount of light you can collect. So that's why the bigger the objective lens or the bigger the objective mirror, the better the telescope. So it's not necessarily about the magnification as much as it is about the ability to collect light. And also, we need to adapt for particular conditions. The magnification on one night may need to be very different from the magnification on a different night depending upon the seeing conditions, even if you're looking at the very same object with the very same telescope. So, take a look at the title, it says Telescope, Magnification, Clarity, Resolution, Object Type. There's a lot of things that go into determining what your magnification should be that's ideal for the particular situation. So first, let's think about magnification. You definitely want to increase the size of the image you look at relative to seeing the object with the naked eye. Typically with the naked eye, the, the eye is so small and the amount of light entering your eye is so tiny that objects that are far away are simply too dim to be seen and they're too small to be able to discern. So yeah, you definitely do want something like a telescope to magnify the size of the image to the point where you can actually see it. But we also want to think about clarity because if the magnification is too large, the image becomes dim, very dim. The larger you make the object, you take the same amount of light and you spread over a larger image, the image is going to become much fainter, much dimmer, and much more difficult to see. Also, the viewing conditions are very important. If the viewing is poor, what do we mean by the viewing? Well, it's the atmosphere conditions. The atmosphere is a very turbulent mass of air, and sometimes it can be polluted, all kinds of dust particles can be in the air, sometimes it can be clear and still, so the view conditions go from poor to excellent and it depends upon where you're at, location is important on the earth and also the kind of conditions that exist at the moment in the atmosphere. So if the viewing is poor you want to adjust your magnification, you want to make it smaller because otherwise you're also magnifying the turbulence and the interference of the light in the atmosphere to the point where the image becomes blurry. So you want to control that by lowering the magnification if the viewing conditions are poor. Also, resolution. It's all about being able to discern detail of what you're looking at. In order to see the detail, you want to make sure that the diameter of the objective is large enough. The larger the objective, the more detail you can see. The resolution tends to increase. So this is the equation for the resolution angle, and you can see that the diameter uh, D is here in the denominator, so the bigger D is, the smaller the resolution angle, which is what it's all about. You want to be able to discern the smallest possible object at the smallest possible resolution angle. So in this case, a larger diameter is a smaller resolution angle, which is what we call better resolution. And also, the amount of light you can collect is proportional to the diameter of the object. Actually, it's proportional to diameter squared. I should make that so. It's proportional to the square of the diameter because it's really the surface area of the objective lens or objective mirror that allows you to collect all that extra light. Notice that the, the numerical aperture uh, is n times the sine of theta or the diameter divided by twice the focal length. So again, a bigger diameter lens will give you a better viewing condition. You get more light coming in, better resolution, and the whole thing will give you a better picture. The object you're looking at also will determine what kind of magnification you want. Because if you're looking at a planet or a moon where the surface is clear and, and it's the, the features are, are solid, then you can go to a higher magnification. But if you're looking at things that are more nebulous, like nebulous, well, when, <laughs> when they're a little bit more diffuse, there's gases, and the, the detail isn't as, isn't as easy to discern, you may want to go to lower magnification to be able to pull out the details a little bit better. So galaxies and nebulas tend to require a little bit lower magnification for a better picture. Planets and moons, you're allowed to go to higher magnification and still get a good detail in your pictures. And finally, the field of view, FOV or field of view, 
if you have a higher magnification, your field of view goes down to the point where you may not be able to see the entire image. So you may want to adjust the magnification down to get a wider field of view to capture the whole image. If you want to go zero in or zoom in on a very specific spot and getting some more detail, you can go to higher magnification and allow the smaller field of view to occur because you just want to zero in on a specific thing. Graphically, I tried to illustrate what we mean by poor, good, or excellent viewing or seeing. Maybe the word better, better used is seeing. That's what we use, viewing or seeing, but typically I use the word seeing. And you can see here that for the very same object, uh, the optimum magnification will occur perhaps at about 60x. So 60 times the magnification of seeing it without a, a telescope. But if the seeing is good, the conditions of the atmosphere are good, it's not as turbulent, there's not as much dust and debris in the atmosphere, you can up your magnification and still get a good quality picture. You go for low magnification to, to kind of negate the effect of the atmosphere so you don't magnify the turbulence in the atmosphere. But if the, the seeing is good, you may want to go to higher magnification. And when the seeing is excellent, that's the time when you really want to crank up your magnification because then you can really see the detail and you don't have a lot of interference from the atmosphere. So you can see that magnification depends a lot. Sometimes it's almost like a three to one situation uh, where you, you ad, uh, adjust your magnification based upon the seeing conditions. And that is how it's done.